G'day guys, Ryde here, your coffee coach. I've been using the Nano Presso for years. It's a fantastic camping espresso brewer. I really love it. However, I'm never going to use it again. You know why? Because Wakeco, the company that invented the Nano Press, have now released another brewer, also exactly the same as the Nano Press, but enhanced, called the Pico Presso. So in this video, I'm gonna show you both brewers side by side. We're gonna do some experiments, see which one tastes better and measure the TDS out of both of them. But in the end, I'm sure you'll agree with me that the Nano Press is basically RIP. So both of these brewers are by Wakeco, which is a great company making camping specific tools, really good at creating espresso brewers for on those extreme hikes, day hikes, whatever camping options you have, even if you just wanna use it at home and you don't want to spend the money on a full espresso machine, if you drink your coffee without milk, the Nano Presso and the Pico Presso are perfect options. So I've got here the Nano Press. It comes with an additional kit that you can purchase separately, which is the double espresso kit. So it gives you a bigger water reservoir, gives you a slightly bigger option for your espresso as well, so you get double the amount of espresso. But this only does take a small amount of espresso. So it's not as much as probably what you'd need. I always find I have to do two of these just for one single coffee. But at least if you're going out by yourself, this might be an option for you. So we're gonna brew some coffee. I've got some water boiling. I've got some freshly ground Honduras coffee, which is back in stock now. So if you wanna jump on the website, coffeebeansdelivered.com.au, you can purchase this coffee and we'll send it wherever you are around the world. Also, if you like this video, if you like this content, if you've watched two of my videos, please give me a subscribe, give me a like, put a comment in the section below, let us know what your thoughts are on these two brewers and any advice that you can give me. So I'm gonna go over the features of each because they're very similar in a lot of ways. However, they do have some distinct differences. One of the main ones you'll notice is that this only, this porter filter has only the little spout here at the end whereas the Pico Presso, you actually have a full naked porter filter and a basket inside. Now this basket is 18 grams versus the one that comes with it standard is seven grams. I think the one that I've now put in the double extended one gives you about 12 grams extra, but not quite a double a shot. Whereas this one and they're releasing a new basket goes up to 20 grams is a proper double shot. So you're going to be able to extract exactly what you would normally do on an espresso machine from your Pico Presso, you're always gonna be a little bit short on your Nano. That's the main difference there. The compactness of each is obviously noticeable. Look at the size of that one to get it close to a double, and that one's already double. That basically fits in your pocket. This one, you'd have to carry in your backpack. They come with a couple of accessories. They both come with brushes, so that's handy, cleaning. They come with a scoop and a little palm tamper. Although the palm tamper is obviously very different in the size. Palm tamper on the Pico Presso actually is solid stainless steel, whereas that's a bit plasticky. The other thing that's noticeable that doesn't come with the Nano Presso is you've got your WDT tool. Not the greatest, it's just one filament of metal, which I think is a little bit tricky. I'd definitely suggest for both of these or either of these getting a proper WDT tool. This also comes with a coffee catcher, which really helps when you're actually trying to get your coffee prepped. So you pop your coffee catcher on top, put your coffee in, WDT, settle it, and then you can replace that and then start extracting. So this coffee catcher is probably one of the most beneficial features, I think, for any home espresso user or any camping espresso user. But the fact that the Pico Presso thought about this, added that in, it neatly just locks into place. So you don't have to worry about carrying it around separately. It sits all tightly compact up inside that. So they're the features of both. Now let's test the extractions. So I'm gonna weigh out our brew. Let's say 12 grams. I can really pack 12 grams into that. That's pretty much the base of it. I can't distribute, it doesn't come with any distribution tools. The Pico Presso does come with a tiny little WDT tool, a little waste distribution tool. It's not that effective. I definitely recommend you getting a better one, uh, but Nano Presso doesn't have one at all. So it does come with a little nice little palm tamp. 
see how much I can tamp it down. So I've got a bit more space in there. I might be able to get another couple of grams in there if I wanted to. I don't want to double tamp because that'll create layers. So I'm just going to have to go with this. Now, I'm going to put that on top. Got our water boiled. In terms of the water, I'm going to fill up the double basket with my preloaded water. Ah. 130 grams water, place it over here. And let's see what our extraction is. And then we're gonna just test that and see what the yield is. So one of the big things that you'll notice about the Nano Presso over the Pico Presso is that it doesn't have a naked porta filter. So you can't really watch your shot. So it doesn't give you as much information. Outside of that, it's very much the same to use. You keep pumping it, build up the pressure. There you go, the shot isn't as nice. I think with the Pico Presso, you can actually run a lot finer coffee through it. With the Nano Presso, I've, I've ground this for the Pico Presso, the Nano Presso, it's a little bit too fine for it. So, but you can see, not the best extraction. I've only managed to get 10 grams out and I'm aiming for about 25. <music> So I got my 25 grams out, but I might run it again now because I think the grinds were too fine. I, I grind them enough for the Pico Presso, but for the Nano Presso, I actually forgot it doesn't have as many holes and it can't extract coffee as finely. So it's very light, very weak and hollow. It's very sour, definitely under extracted. We'll put that aside, I'll do it again and we'll reconvene at this point in two seconds. Okay, so I've regathered, regrouped. I've got my Corsa Espresso. I'm gonna give it another shot here. So I've ground it for home espresso rather than commercial grind, and we will test it out again. Obviously with the size of it being a bit coarser, I'm gonna actually end up getting less in. So I'm only gonna be able to get 11 grams so hopefully this extracts properly now. Put that in there, refill my water. Okay, slightly better extraction now. It's still a little bit fine, but it's, yeah, unfortunately. All right, so that turned out a lot better when I was grinding it much more coarse. So, that's yeah, way better. Still a little bit bitter. There's some unbalanced flavors in there, but I mean, overall, that was a much better extraction than the one I did a little bit before. So, we'll put that aside now. That's the original one. We'll put this in separate to test in a second. So they're from the nanos, and now we'll do the same extraction again, but through the Pico Presso. So let's weigh out how much we can get in here. I know it's quite significantly more than the Nano Presso. I think it's about 17 to 18. The way that it fits together is actually way, is so much better, 75 grams of water. So much better because unlike the other one, which you see the water spilled out because this just fits in and it, the pressure of the water actually forced it back out again. This actually screws on, so it's not gonna come off. So I'm gonna burn my hand. And now you see how much better this extracts. The pump action feels a lot cleaner as well. You can start to see the coffee coming through. Okay, so you saw how much nicer that extraction was compared to the Nano Presso. Now, 
tasting it, yeah, definitely tastes so much better, much more balanced, much cleaner. I can taste now all of those nice like, sort of milk chocolates and nuts that are in there in the Honduras. So you can easily see just from that alone why the Pico Presso outranks the Nano Presso. Now I'm gonna do one final experiment, which is to measure the TDS and extraction yield of all of the different extractions that we've done to see how they compare from a data perspective. Because this is how I've tasted it. This is my own personal palate, my preferences, my experience, my lack of the greater knowledge of all the coffees because there's a huge amount to understand. But now we can look at it from a purely scientific process and see if there's any correlation between the numbers and what I experience. Okay, so I've zeroed my refractometer. And if you haven't seen the video on the refractometer by Dye Fluids, then you can check that out here. But basically what I'm measuring is the extraction, how much coffee is in here, so we want to be looking for a really nice balanced extraction and a TDS of around 10%, any plus or minus that is what I'm aiming for. This is cooled down and out now so I can measure this quite nicely. The extraction in So yeah, you can see it was massively under extracted at 6%. We were aiming for close to 10. I would have been happy with a 8.9 or 8.73, something like that would have been perfectly acceptable. We got 6%. So that was the very first extraction where I just, the grind was too coarse, uh, too fine. The grind was too fine and the extraction didn't come through nicely at all. When I tasted it, it was just that hollowness, that sourness. I could tell straight away that it was under extracted. So I then, adjusted the grind and now we're going to test that to see what extraction we got from this. Now I don't expect it to be perfect. I'm not thinking that we can always achieve the best extraction from these devices because these are $200, $300 for you know these little brewers. They aren't your thousand dollar machine so I don't expect them to be able to deliver like a thousand dollar machine would. But I'm hoping to get a reasonable extraction from it. Okay, that's better. This one's 7.72. So we got a, got a lot closer to that sweet spot. We're just outside the parameters of the sweet spot and that coffee did taste a lot better. It's a bit cold now. Yeah, it definitely is more balanced. That's one thing. So it's not that massively uneven uh, that we experienced with the first one. Still, it's not perfect. It's not great. So now this one should have had time to cool down. We got an 8.63 on that one. So that, even though we probably could hone it in and try again and really refine it to get right inside that sweet spot, that is sitting right on the corner of the sweet spot box, which, you know, is a better, higher extraction than even our best attempts on the Nanopresso. So from a purely scientific point of view, the Picopresso outranks the Nanopresso all the way. So hopefully you agree with me. If you do, give it a like, give it a subscribe, leave a comment if you don't agree with me. But I would say that the Nanopresso is now no longer needed. Even if you have a Nanopresso, I would highly recommend you go out and buy the Pico Presso. Again, these are my opinions. I'm not sponsored by Pico Presso. I'm not sponsored by Wakeco. The other thing that I wanna mention about the Pico Presso is they're bringing out some extra accessories ones like a stand, a foldable stand, a pressure gauge, and even a reflective mirror to see your extraction better. These things make this the perfect portable espresso brewer that I've ever come across so far. So I would highly recommend whether you've got a Nanopresso to go out and purchase the Picopresso, get some of the accessories when they drop, and really enjoy the best espresso shots on the road, wherever you are. But that's just my opinion. I'm Ride, your coffee coach. 
And as always, enjoy your brew.